morning. Okay. So, um, in terms of a summary for what we did last day, even though it, was, it feels like a long time ago, I had to go back and, and check to see what we did. Um, we did factoring and we did, uh, we introduced the domain. So just as a little quick review, more of a reminder of what we did. We talked about factoring. So um, how do we factor equations? What are some tricks that we can use? Right, we can use groupings, we can pull out common factors. Um, just a, a couple of things that we can do. We'll look more at some factoring today when I introduce the, um, the quadratic equation and uh, the quadratic formula. But we also, so this was from 1.3, and then we started talking about the domain of um, an algebraic expression. So we started 1.4, 1. 1. not really for us, uh, if you're looking in our textbook, but like I said, I'm just, I'm pulling these things from, um, from a different textbook that I didn't want to make you buy, but it's still really good. So anyways, um, we're stealing. So uh, yeah, we talked about the domain. So, <clears throat> And I, I used up all those examples. Um, I think we went, it looked like we, we went through and did almost all of them. So what I'm going to do is um, let's just, as part of our review, find the domain of the root of 2x over x plus 1. We did this one last day, but uh, I'm not quite awake yet to think of a clever example, so um, that's okay. Because uh, uh, there's a risk when you make up examples that it really, really doesn't work out, um, and that would be really bad. So what are some things that we have to remember for the domain? Well, the domain the domain is all the possible x values that we can put into this equation, right, or this expression. So we can't divide by zero. And we can't take the square root of a negative number. Can't take the square root of a negative number. So those are some things that we have to keep in mind, right? And so this value, x plus 1, can't be 0 because we can't divide by 0. And then we've got a square root, so uh, 2x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? It can't be less than 0. We can take the square root of 0, right? The problem is if we have the square root in the denominator, right, down here in the bottom, then we'd have to make sure that it doesn't equal zero as well. Right. But in this case, it's all safe. So let's just do, right, can't equal zero, and circling 2x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Right. So we're gonna find the values that, uh, that do that um, and then the, the common overlap of these, or the overlap of these two um, individual domains, that will be our overall domain, right? And so we said the overall domain will be the overlap of all individual domains combined. Or I guess the overlap of all individual domains works. So 
first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that x plus 1 does not equal 0, right? That's the same as saying, well, x cannot be negative 1. Notice that all I'm doing is I'm subtracting 1 from both sides. So x plus 1 minus 1 puts me at x, and 0 minus 1 puts me at negative 1, right? So I'm treating this uh, not equal to as an equal sign, and I'm allowed to do that. Um, it's not until later when we've <clears throat> talked about inequalities that I'll get you to keep an eye out for um, treating the inequalities as an equal sign because there are some times that it doesn't work. But for us right now, we're okay to just start treating them as, as equal signs and, um, and then we'll adjust as we go. Okay. So I'm going to move this over here a little bit. And then we said that 2x has to be greater than or equal to 0. <clears throat> Again, just treating this as an equal sign, the greater than or equal to. Um, to get x on its own, we would divide by 2 on both sides. So 2x divided by 2 puts me at just x. 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So I get x must be greater than or equal to 0. So now, it's usually helpful to put these in terms of a number line to see the overlap, right? Otherwise, it's hard to figure out what the overlap might be. And so I'm going to start by putting out a number line here. I have some key points, right? I've got 0 and negative 1. So I'm going to put those on here, 0, negative 1. And here. If x can't be negative 1, what that looks like is I've got uh, an empty dot here, but everything else is allowed. For the, the next domain, or that's how I'm kind of thinking about them, um, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So here at 0, I have a closed dot and then everything greater than zero is allowed. The overlap here includes zero and is everything greater than zero. So here, this is the overall domain. Therefore, Remember those three dots, uh, shorthand for therefore. Therefore, the overall domain, remember we use set notation, so, or set builder notation, we can call it. Uh, it's a set of x's such that x is greater than or equal to zero. So that's the kind of where we ended last day, right? Now, um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. So I'll show you guys where I posted, uh, let's see here, of course, it's okay. <clears throat> So, uh, there. Mine is a lot, has a lot more stuff than your guys's. Uh, one thing that I'll show you is I posted the 1.3 solutions. So like I've been saying, all those uh, extra practice problems that I had for 1.3 uh, and, and onwards, but I only did 1.3 so far, here are all the solutions to those so that you can practice, right? And those are just the questions from, um, from those notes, the fundamental, uh, fundamentals, part two, part three, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so these, these problems here, I posted the solutions. Okay, now where did I put, oh yeah. So there should be a fundamentals part three which is uh, 1.5, yeah. 
nice short two pager, a little squished, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is it's actually going to be really helpful to do uh, equations. So 1.5 before we keep going in 1.4. And I know that seems weird, um, but it's really just to introduce a trick for factoring. Okay. And so uh, let's see here. Before we continue in section 1.4, um, we will do 1.5 so that we have some more tricks for factoring. So that we have some more tricks for factoring. Right? We talked about some tricks uh, last day, but uh, not all of them, definitely not all of them, but uh, let's see here. <clears throat> if you have a look at, yeah, 1.4, right? So this is where we started last day and we found all these domains. And if you go ahead here, right? What we're supposed to do next is uh, talk about rational expressions, right? So now we've talked about how fractions behave, right? The, the laws of fractions, we've talked about those. We know how to deal with fractions, but now we've got these algebraic expressions in the numerator and the denominator, right? And so we'll be able to deal with those. The rules stay the same, we just have to kind of um, kind of pay attention and make sure uh, that we treat these algebraic expressions properly. So before we do that, okay, uh, one of the things is that we factor both the numerator and the denominator. Now, some of these, right, some of these, like the first ones, fine, I see an x minus three and it's all being multiplied and here's an x minus three, fine. I can cancel those five and 10, I can simplify, right? And so, um, so some of these are easier, right? But then we get into things like x squared plus five x plus six over x squared plus eight x plus 15, where we would have to factor these two and see if we're able to simplify anything um, in order to simplify the rational expression overall. When we have something like this, so an x squared, an x, and a constant, we've got a quadratic equation. So 1.5 shows us how to factor that kind of easily. So that's why I want to jump there, show you how to do it, and then we can jump back here and it'll be a lot easier. So there you have it. Uh, let's see, let's go back to our notes. <clears throat> okay, so 1.5 is called equations. And I put it in fundamentals part three. Because we're in fourth week, I guess, but the first week doesn't count out. It's just like intro and stuff. Um, okay, so we know that anything with an equal sign is an equation. Um, and a lot of this stuff is kind of old news. Uh, but I do expect you to be able to solve equations uh, for different values. And so something like these questions here, these I'm going to steal and we'll use as a warm up, right? And so we need to be able to rearrange equations and solve for different values. Okay, so that's where we're going to start here. Okay. 
remember that what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Okay. So here, we'll start slow, right? Um, if we have to solve the equation for the indicated variable, we have PV equals NRT, which we have to solve for R, right? And so let's start there and then probably build up to something kind of bigger down here. So let's do, let's do 31. If we have PV equals lowercase nRT, solve for R, what I want to do is I want to hold this R steady and kind of shuffle everything else over. So if I'm multiplying here on this side, then I need to divide both sides by N and T in order to move it to the other side, right? So kind of basic solving rules here. So we have PV divided by NT. I can move those because they're just multiplying on this side. I'm allowed to move those over uh, as one thing, which equals, oops, which equals R, right? Technically, I have NRT divided by NT, but because I'm multiplying here and dividing, they go away. So we've got PV over NT is equal to R. That should feel pretty good, right? hopefully. Um, I'll leave some of these, but let's do 34 together. Right? Dealing with fractions, um, so 34 says, here, I'll just steal it from the side here. 1 over r is 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. Solve for r1. Okay. So I want to solve for this guy here, right? I don't want to solve for 1 over R1. I want to solve for R1. So that means I'm going to have to rearrange this thing and be able to pull out just R1 and rewrite it in terms of, OK, R1 on one side and everything else on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the 1 plus, uh, sorry, the 1 over R1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 over R2 from both sides. So. I have 1 over r. Um, I'll, I'll try to use the different colors to show what I'm doing. 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 minus 1 over r2, oops, r squared. Those will go away. You do not need to show this much work at all. Um, I want to see that this has got moved over. You don't need to show this. You can just have it blank if you want. Okay, I'm just showing what happened. So now you have 1 over r minus 1 over r2 is 1 over r1. We're trying to solve for r1. So what I'm going to do is in order to bring this from the denominator up to the numerator, what I need to do is I need to multiply it over to this side. Notice though that I'm multiplying both of these values, both of these fractions by R1. Okay. So what I have is I have 1 over R minus 1 over R2 is 1 over R1 and then times R1 times R1. Often I like to have, uh, if I've got brackets, if I'm multiplying something, I like to have it on the left-hand side, but that's just a personal reference. You could have just as easily put it over on this side. Just make sure that it's multiplying. So then R1 over R1 
is one. So we're left with this one here. So what I have is I end up with R1 oops, times one over R minus one over R2 is one. Okay. I'm trying to shake out this R1. So what I can do, because I'm multiplying this whole thing by R1, I can divide both sides by one over R minus one over R2. It's gonna get a little bit nasty, but that's okay. So I end up with R1 is, I guess I should show, oh, yuck. R1 times one over R minus one over R2 is one. What I'm doing is dividing by one over R minus one over R2 divided by one over R minus one over R2 on both sides. Here, this cancels with this. So what I'm left with is R1 equals one over, oops, one over R minus one over R2. This is the solution. Okay. Uh, we know how to deal with fractions, right? This is essentially a fraction over a fraction. So if we wanted to simplify this right here, I'll just say um, this is the solution. For practice, right, for practice with dealing with fractions, how about, um, oh, I'm just realizing that we just, we haven't really talked about it. Never mind. Okay. Think. Forget I said anything. There, that's the solution. Done. I was, I was thinking that we could simplify this a little bit, but let's leave it because we haven't talked about algebraic expressions as a fraction. Let's see here. Let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> Let's do one of these biggies. How about we do um, 42 as well? And then I'll leave the rest for you to practice because this, this stuff will require practice, right? Um, and it's not until all of this feels really, uh, really easy that you're done, okay? So, uh, so you'll need to practice this stuff a lot. So 42, A equals P all times one plus I over 100 all squared. Solve for i. That's tricky, right? Uh, I say it's tricky because i is all the way in here. It's uh, it's under a, a square, but one plus i over a hundred is all being squared. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to peel this onion and slowly, slowly just isolate the i, right? So the first thing I need to do is I need to move this P over to the left-hand side. Then I'm gonna move the square over to the left-hand side. Then I'm gonna be able to move this one over to the one hand, uh, to the left-hand side. And then eventually I'm gonna need to move this 100 over to get I on its own. I'm not gonna show those all, every single step, um, like I have been doing on both sides. I'm just gonna move things over. So I have A divided by P, right? Because the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by P on both sides. So I'm not gonna show it on this side. I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. One plus I over 100 squared. 
Next thing to kind of get into the middle here is I need to move the square over. So to undo a square, I have to take the square root, right? And so I have to take the square root of both sides. And so what I have is I have the square root of a over p is one plus i over 100. Oh. These brackets aren't doing anything anymore because I've moved the square over to the left-hand side, right? And so um, the next thing I can do, or should do, is I should move this one over to the left-hand side. So I've got one, a positive one, so I need to subtract one from both sides to move it over to the left-hand side. So I've got the square root of a over p, and then the square root ends there. So just to, to highlight that, I'm gonna put a little lip on it. Minus one is i over 100. Yeah. So close. I've almost got i on its own. I just need to multiply both sides by 100, making sure that I multiply everything over here on the left-hand side by 100. So now I have, and like before, I like to have whatever I'm multiplying on the left-hand side of this, or kind of on the outside of everything. So 100 times the square root of a over p, put a lip on it here, minus one, equals i. So that's it, right? Here's the solution. So like I said, we need to practice those. We need to get really good at moving things around in an equation um, and being able to solve for different things. So same thing with a linear equation. Uh, let's see here. Um, So here, these aren't, well, they're linear equations, but, um, uh, but they're not in the form of y equals mx plus b like we're used to seeing, not quite yet at least. So, um, but we can still work with these, right? And when it says solve the equation, it means just solve for whatever the variable is, right? Solve for x, if there's x's in here, solve for y if there's y's in there. Um, it won't be until a little bit later, solve for t if there's t's in there. So if it just says solve the equation, you're just solving for uh, that variable. So it won't be until later uh, that we might have x's and y's, but we'll deal with that when we get there. Uh, let's do Let's do 18 together. So if I'm solving for x here, so 18, I've got 2x plus 3 equals 7 minus 3x. If I have to solve this, it means I have to solve for x, which means I have to get um, x on its own. But notice that there's a 2x and then a minus 3x, so I'm going to have to need uh, collect like terms uh, and there's a constant and a constant on either side of the equation. So um, I'm going to slowly move things over and try to morph this into just uh, an x on its own. Now, looking at this, one option that I have is I could move the 2x over to the right hand side and then that would make me move the 7 over to the left hand side. Here's the problem with that though, but it's totally fine if you like negatives. Uh, I don't love negatives, so I, I try to avoid them if I can. So 
if I were to move 2x over to the right hand side, I'd have to subtract 2x from both sides. So then I'm at negative 5x and moving the 7 over, I'd have to subtract 7 from both sides. So then I'm at 3 minus 7, another negative, not very nice. So what I'm going to do when I look at this is I'm going to say, okay, well, to move this negative 3x over to the left hand side, I'm going to add 3x to both sides and then move this 3 over to the right hand side and that's just going to make my life easier. Either way, you're going to end up with the same solution, uh, but it's good to kind of have a look and see what's going to make my life easier. So here we go. I'm going to do 2x plus 3x equals 7 minus 3. Notice that I've, I'm not showing that this moved over to the right hand side and this moved over to the left hand side. Well, I am, right? But I'm not showing it on both sides that I added 3x. I only show it on the side that it matters. Okay. So just to show this moved over to this side and this moved over to this side. Okay. 2x plus 3x. Right. We can pull out that common x and then just add the coefficients, or if you're comfortable, we can just do uh, 2 plus 3x. So it puts us at 5x is 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. So then x, if I want to get x on its own, x is going to be 4 divided by 5. And that's it. It's going to be a good idea to check your work as you go. And so here, check your solution. So what we're saying is that 2x plus 3 should equal 7 minus 3x if x is 4 over 5. That's what we're saying, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 4 over 5 for x here and just hopefully I get the same that they're equal. Right? Otherwise it doesn't, it's not a solution. So I have 2 times 4 over 5 plus 3 is 7 minus 3 times 4 over 5. Okay. Back to fractions, right? If I need to combine these two terms, then uh, I need a common denominator. So here uh, I get 8 over 5 plus 3 is equal to 7 minus 12 over 5. I need a common denominator, right? So and we know how to do that. If I need both of these, so this is, the 3 is essentially 3 over 1, right? If I need it over 5, so something over 5, then I can multiply 3 by 5 over 5. And same thing here, multiply the 7 by 5 over 5 to get it over 5. And we'll see what happens. So 8 over 5 plus 3 times 5 over 5 equals 7 times 5 over 5 minus 12 over 5. Huh? 8 over 5 plus 15 over 5. Oops. Oh. Uh, 15 over 5 is 35 over 5 minus 12. I am just 12 over 5. I'm just checking my work as I go here. 7 times 5. Too early. Um, this side becomes, so 35 minus 12, because it's over that common denominator, I'm allowed to deal with that. So 35 minus 12 is 23, oops, helps if I write 23 over 5, and 8 plus 15 is also 23 over 5, right? So it works out 
making it the proper solution, and it looks like we only have the one solution for now. Okay. So here you were done. Here you're just checking your work, right? It's only going to be the right answer if they end up being equal to each other in the end, right? And it could take some work, um, but it, it's nice to be able to check that you got the right answer. Um, <clears throat> I'm just looking at some of these other ones. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave these for you guys to do. Some of them are a little bit tricky. Um, and once you've worked through them, maybe kind of bring questions for next day if there are any that gave you grief. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to get into quadratic equations. Oh. So quadratic equations are equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, right? Uh, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a cannot be zero because then there's no x squared term, and then you're just left with, uh, with a linear equation like we were looking at. Okay. A lot of the time, we might have to rearrange things to make it look like this, but if you have a, a variable squared and maybe a variable on its own and a constant, then you can rearrange it to make a quadratic equation. Okay. And there are a couple of things um, that these notes go through and show you that we'll kind of gloss over for a little bit because I want to get to the meat and potatoes here. And so here we've got this quadratic equation and what I want to show you is um, how to factor something like this, right? So if you go to the second page, uh, the quadratic formula, if we kind of skip all this, completing the square, that's going to come up later. So I'm going to kind of gloss over it um, until we need it. Okay? But what we're going to use is the quadratic formula. Now, we use the quadratic formula to be able to factor a quadratic equation easily, right? So I use it as a, as a really big crutch when I need to factor something and, um, you know, none of those special factoring formulas are working, um, then it's just nice to be able to easily factor something um, using the quadratic formula. So we can factor quadratic equations by making use of the quadratic formula. Oops. So the roots of a quadratic equation uh, are just the solution. So it's the solution to something like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, right? As long as a is not zero, right? So as long as we have an x squared term, then we'll be able to use this. Okay. So here, um, the roots are the solutions 
to something like this. So it has to have that form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So it must be set equal to zero. And so you'd have to move all your constants over to the left-hand side, but they'll get absorbed into, into the C, right? All your constants. So you'd have to simplify it, a quadratic formula or a quadratic equation until it looks like this, but then you'll be able to find the solutions. And the reason we need the solutions is because that's what we'll use to be able to factor this thing. Okay. So the solutions for x, just like we found up here, right? We had 2x plus 3 equals 7 minus 3x. That's nice and, and simple, right? And we found that, okay, well, a solution must be that x equals 4 over 5. Right? And then we plug it in and, and show that they're equal. So a solution here is that x must be negative b, where the b comes from this equation here, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So where the a, b, and c come from this, um, this equation that we're dealing with. Now, um, these are the solutions, and we'll use those um, to make our factors. And let me show you what I what I mean. Uh, there are times where there are no solutions, uh, right? So the, and we can talk about the discriminant, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna gloss over that. Um, Right, but there can be two solutions, one solution, or no solutions. Um, and I'm sure some of these will yield no solutions, and I should have worked through some of them to figure out which ones that would be, but uh, we'll get there. Okay. I'm sure we'll come across something. But first thing I want to do is I want to start um, with... Uh, Maybe 70. Right. Actually, let's start nice and easy. Let's start with 65 and then we'll do 70. 65. <clears throat> X squared minus 2X minus 15 equals zero. Okay. Use the quadratic formula to find solutions. Then use the solutions to factor the equation. Then use the solutions to factor the equation. Okay. So we've got, uh, let me write it out again, x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals zero. Now, just a reminder, right, we have to have things in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So this looks like it all matches up Okay, I just need to figure out what my a, b, and c are. So what I'm gonna have is I have a equals one, right? To get x squared, a must be one. Um, to get negative two x, b must be negative two, right? And same thing with c, to get plus c, I must have, um, c must be negative 50. So b is, negative two and C must be negative 50. The quadratic formula uh, 
looks like x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. The plus minus says that, okay, for, for one of these solutions, you're going to do negative b plus the square root over 2a. And then for the second solution, you're going to do negative b minus the square root over 2a. So you'll get two solutions. Okay. And if it helps to think of it, right, when you have an x squared term, this thing is going to look like a parabola. So you probably remember a parabola like this. It's like a little uh, bowl shape on your graph. And we've moved it up or we've moved it over. And the solutions are just going to be the values of x where this thing crosses the uh, x-axis. Okay. So we're, where the solution is 0. So if we have a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 15, I can just plug those values in here and solve for the values of x. So I get x is negative, negative 2. So you have to be really careful, right? Negative, negative 2 plus minus the square root of negative 2 squared. Hold up. On your calculator, if I do negative 2 squared, it'll often give me negative 4. But you need to remember that the negative 2 is all inside the brackets and then it's being squared. So whenever you're squaring a number, you should end up with a positive value. Okay, you can't square a value and get a negative. So if you're getting negatives on your calculator, just be careful. So just put those negative two and then square it in brackets, right? Negative two brackets squared, um, and then you'll get a positive number. Or just drop the negative and square it and you'll get the same thing. Uh, minus 4 times 1 times c, which is negative 15, all over, and it's really important that you extend that line all the way through, uh, all over 2 times 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve this here. So x equals negative negative 2 is just 2, plus minus um, the root of 4 minus and then 4 times negative 15, the times 1 doesn't matter, right? 4 times 15 is 60. So negative 4 times negative 15 puts me at positive 60 divided by 2. Remembering that we can't take the square root of a negative number, right? And so a lot of the time, these are going to just yield a positive value that we'll be able to take the square root of. If it doesn't, it means we have no solutions. And that's fine. Uh, but we can expect solutions for, for a little bit in this course, at least. So if x is 2 plus minus the square root of 64, over 2. If you do the square root of 64 on your calculator, you end up at 8. So we have x is 2 plus minus 8 divided by 2. Notice that it's all divided by 2, right? So you don't want to do something silly like canceling this 2 with this 2 because the 8 is also being divided by 2. So what we have is we have x must be 2 plus 8 divided by 2, and x must be 2 minus 8 divided by 2. Right, so we have to get two solutions. <clears throat> okay. 2 plus 8 divided by 2. 2 plus 8 is 10 divided by 2. Puts me at x must be 5. 
2 minus 8 puts me at negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 puts me at x must be negative 3. So here, these are the solutions. So that's fun. That's part of the problem that we were going to do. Right? So use the quadratic formula to find the solutions, which is what we just did. Right? So solutions, and we'll check them. If we plug in x equals uh, 5 into here, then we should equal 0. And if we put in x equals negative 3 into here, it should still equal 0, because we found that those are the solutions. Then we're going to use the solutions to factor the equation. So a little bit of a stretch. How about we check our work first? We can check our solutions. So we had, now I can't remember what, uh, x squared minus 2x, x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Let x equal 5. I get 5 squared minus 2 times 5 minus 15. Does it equal 0? Well, I get 5 squared is 25 minus 10 minus 15. Hey, it looks pretty good. Minus 10 minus 15 equals 0. So 5 is a solution. Therefore, x equals 5 is a solution. How about if we let x be negative 3? If x is negative 3, then I'm into x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Well, I get negative 3 squared. Remember, it should, it should give you a positive value minus 2 times negative 3 minus 15 does it equal 0. I'm just putting a little question mark up top because I'm just checking to see if it's equal 0. It will equal 0, but uh, we just want to make sure. So negative 3 squared is the same as 3 squared, so that's 9. Negative 2 times negative 3 puts me at <laughs> plus 6 minus 15. 9 plus 6 minus 15 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 3 is a solution. So we've decided that these are the solutions. Um, so that's, that's good. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these solutions to factor this equation. Okay. We can use these solutions to factor the quadratic equation. So what I have is, okay, if x equals 5 is a solution and x equals negative 3 is a solution, then what I can do is, okay, something uh, has to go to 0 when I add 5. So what I do and this is just kind of, I guess, my trick. x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Factored can look like x times x equals 0. Because okay? I want to factor it into something like this. And so I want to go from here to x plus or minus something and x plus or minus something. Now I'm looking at the x equals 5 as a solution. 
So what that means is if I plug in x equals 5 here, then the solution should still be 0. Right? So uh, you want to take the, the opposite here and say, OK, well, then I need x minus 5 as one of these things, right? x minus 5, right? Because here, if x equals 5, x minus 5 is 5 minus 5, which is 0. 0 times anything gives you 0, right? And so uh, therefore, x equals 5 is still a solution. So that's nice. So that's the trick, right? You look at the solution and you say, okay, well, if x equals 5 is a solution, then I would need to have x minus 5 in here for x equals 5 to still be a solution. Now we look at the negative 3 and we say, okay, well, then I must have x plus 3 in order for this to still be a solution. So you can try it, you can plug in. Uh, if x is negative 3, then I get negative 3 minus 5, that's negative 8, times negative 3 plus 3, that's 0. So negative 8 times 0 is still 0, so it's still a solution. Now what's nice, we can still check this. Uh, oh man, get you to check your work all the time. Um, sometimes I get lazy, but a lot of the time it's nice to be able to check your work, right? Uh, make sure that you did it right. We can expand this, right? Just like we did with all the factoring that we've done so far, is we can expand this just to make sure that it looks like we got back to the same value. So we can check our work. We can check our work by expanding. to make sure we arrive back at the original quadratic equation. At the original quadratic equation. So checking our work, x minus 5 times x plus 3 should equal x squared minus 2x minus 15. Here we go. x minus 5 times x plus 3. And maybe I'll scoot this over just a little bit. All right. Expanding. OK. Here, basically FOIL, right? First, x times x, and then x times 3 plus negative 5x. Uh, plus negative 5 times 3, so I get x squared is 3x minus 5x uh, minus 15. Looks promising. It's x squared 3x minus 5x puts me at negative 2x minus 15. Is that magic or what? x squared minus 2x minus 15. x squared minus 2x minus 15. Right. Therefore, uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals x minus 5 times x plus 3. Here we have factored. Wow. Yeah. So you can see what a useful tool that is to be able to use the quadratic formula to be able to factor these uh, quadratic equations. Right? Really useful. Let's do another one. Of course, I don't expect you to uh, show me that you're checking your work, but I do expect you to do this little bit where I'm showing you how to check your work. I'm expecting to see that. Um, or I'm expecting to 
uh, to have you do that, but maybe on the side, right? It's not something that I need you to submit. Yeah. All right, where's another one? Uh, how about, oh yeah, which one did I say next? I think we said uh, 70, 70 looks good. 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Three x squared plus seven x plus four equals zero. Just make sure I have it here. Seven x plus four. Okay, so now I'm gonna go a little bit faster, right? And say, okay, well here, my a is three, my b is seven, and my c is positive four. Remembering the quadratic formula, you'll probably end up memorizing it. You don't have to because uh, you guys are just kind of, um, you know, working on tests at home, but definitely have it definitely ready um, and available just in case you ever need it, right? And, and we will use it a lot, okay? That might be fun to memorize it. You don't have to. X is negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. This gets us the solutions. Then we use the solutions to be able to factor this thing. All right. So just plugging in our values, we get x is negative 7 plus minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 3ac, which is 4, over 2 times a, which is 3. So now x is negative 7 plus minus the square root of 49 minus 4 times 3 times 4, 4 times 3, oops, 4 times 3 times 4 is 48. So close to a negative. <sighs> Looks like we'll still have a solution. Um, and then 2 times 3 is 6 which means I have x must be negative 7 plus minus, and you know what? 49 minus 48 is just 1. The square root of 1 is 1. You can try it on your calculator, but I promise. Uh, so I'm just going to skip straight to 1 over 6. Um, so then uh, negative 7 so therefore, x is negative 7 plus 1 over 6, and x is negative 7 minus 1 over 6. So x is negative 7 plus 1, putting me at negative 6 divided by 6. Definitely, um, if you're not feeling 100% comfortable, definitely just use your calculator. There's no shame in using your calculator. Just do it. I don't want to see any silly mistakes, right? Just because, um, I don't know, you're too cool for a calculator. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Divide by 6 puts me at negative 1. And x is negative 7 minus 1. Negative 8 divided by 6. Uh, just confirming negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8 divided by 6 which if I do, oh, sorry, negative eight divided by six or negative four over three, because if you've, especially if you've got this calculator, right, it just gives you the most simplified fraction. Not very nice to have to deal with fractions, but it is a solution, so what can you do, right? So now, factor, and I'll write it out again, 3x squared plus 7x plus 4 equals 0. 
So I'll highlight that this is the solution, or these are the solutions, solutions to the equation. If I have to factor this, right, if x is negative 1, then it should equal 0. And if x is negative 4 over 3, then it should equal 0. So what I end up with, if you want to factor 3x squared plus 7x plus 4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of write out this blank factoring situation here. And then I'm going to have x plus 1, right? from this negative one, if x is negative one, this goes to zero, so zero times anything makes zero. Right, same trick. And then x plus four over three is also gonna be one of my um, factors. Okay. x plus one times x over, uh, x plus four over three is zero. <clears throat> let's go ahead and check this, right? Here we're done, but let's check it just to be sure. X plus one times X plus four over three, we've got that pesky, um, fraction in there. I'm going to leave the equals zero because what I just want to make sure is I want to make sure that it equals 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Okay. So dealing with this left hand side here, I'm going to expand this. So okay, here we go. So x times x is x squared plus 4 over 3x Oops. 4 over 3x plus x plus 4 over 3. Okay. If nothing's changing on this side, I'm just going to leave it blank. Okay. But I'm going to keep this equals question mark. Uh, but if nothing changes here, sometimes I'll just leave it blank. Okay. So x squared plus 4x plus x plus 4 over 3. Here's a pickle. I want to combine these, but I've got a fraction as my coefficient, so I'm adding a fraction plus 1. Uh, I'm going to use that same trick again, right? So if I'm dealing with fractions, I have to have that common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have x squared plus 4 over 3x plus x, and then times 3 over 3 to get that common denominator of 3, and then plus 4 over 3, keeping the right-hand side the same. So now I have x squared plus 4 over 3x plus 3 over 3x plus 4 over 3. That was kind of an extra step we didn't need because now I can just combine these um, the denominators. So I get x squared plus 4x plus 3x over 3 plus 4 over 3. Does it equal the right hand side? Okay, so I'm getting there, right? Uh, okay, 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 here we go. Um, I get x squared plus 7x over 3 plus 4 over 3. Okay. Over 3 and over 3. The only thing that's not over 3 is this x squared. But if I want to combine all these and have uh, a common denominator, then I need to multiply this by 3 over 3. So I get x squared 
times 3 over 3 plus 7x over 3 plus 4 over 3. So I have 3x squared over 3 plus 7x over 3 plus 4 over 3. Oh, one's a lot more work than the previous one. That's okay. Uh, now I've got a common denominator, so I can work through these 3x squared plus 7x plus 4 all over 3. Does that equal 3x squared plus 7x plus 4? Not really. 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Not really, right? Um, but what we have to remember is that this is equal to 0. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I can show that 3x squared plus 7x plus 4 divided by 3 equals 0. Now all of a sudden, so I'm temporarily replacing this with 0 because it has to equal 0. So now I'm plugging in 0 just to illustrate that. Okay, well then I can multiply both sides by 3. 0 times 3 is 0. And then all of a sudden, um, I'm back to where I was supposed to be. 3x squared plus 7x plus 4 equals 0, which equals 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. Whew. That was just checking our work, right? Um, but really, really useful tool to be able to use the quadratic formula right, to be able to find solutions and then use those solutions to write this thing as a factor, right, or as a, a factored equation. Uh, <clears throat> so now let's return to section 1.4. So now we can use this factoring trick in section 1.4. Section 1.4 continued. I talked about, um, yeah, so kind of weird mix up here. Um, we started talking about the domain of an algebraic expression, and then in 1.4, which was move it into our section here. Right, so 1.4 rational expressions now, right, especially if we see something like this, x squared minus 5x plus 6, now I can say, okay, well, I'm able to find the solutions of this using the quadratic formula if I set it equal to 0, and then I'll be able to factor this thing. So what we can do now is we can start simplifying rational expressions. So a rational expression, like we said, is just an algebraic expression uh, in both the numerator and the denominator. So if we want to simplify a uh, rational expression, right, and this is where we kind of left in 1.4, um, oh, I don't want you to use to do this one. The reason I'm not getting you to do it is because there's an x to the 3 here, uh, we're only going to go up to, actually, I'm seeing an x to the, th oh, but, ah, <laughs> never mind. Uh, you don't have to do that, not 24. Okay. So now, oops. 
Copy. Paste. If we have to simplify some rational expressions, right? What that means, we want to just be able to cancel. We'll probably have to have to factor things like we introduced factoring. Factoring is usually for uh, canceling, right? And so um, we'll want to use our, our tricks that we have up our sleeves and, um, and we can kind of simplify these things. So we'll start nice and slow. We'll start with 15. Right, 15 is five times x minus three times two x plus one divided by 10 times x minus three squared. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scan and see, okay, well, I've got an x minus three down here but I've also got an x minus three up here. And because I'm multiplying all the way across, I'm able to rewrite this thing uh, as something a little bit simpler. So what I get is five times x minus three times two x plus one divided by, and I'm also gonna tackle the 10 here. 10 I can rewrite as five times two, right? So I get five times two times x minus three times x minus three. I've only got one x minus three up here and I've got x minus three squared down here so I can rewrite it like that. And then because I'm multiplying up here, all the way across, I'm able to cancel the x minus three in both the numerator and the denominator, leaving an x minus three in the denominator uh, and then a five and a five can cancel as well. So now upstairs in the numerator, I've got two X plus one divided by two times X minus three. Just to make it look a little bit nicer, maybe what I can do is I can expand the two times X minus three to make two X minus six, but you don't have to, two X plus one over 2x minus 6. And I would say that's simplified. <laughs> How about we make use of what we just learned? Let's have a look at uh, 18 maybe. Eighteen is x squared minus x minus two divided by x squared minus one. Okay. Notice that this is a quadratic equation and this is also a quadratic equation. Quadratic, quadratic. We can factor this one um, using the special factoring formulas, right? We've got an x squared minus essentially one squared, right? So we could factor it that way, uh, or we can treat it as a quadratic. So this one is a quadratic slash a special um, factoring if you consider it as x squared minus one squared. I'm gonna deal with it as a quadratic just because I wanna show you what that looks like. When you don't have an x term in here, then the b is just zero, right? So, I'm gonna factor these, uh, factor 
shouldn't say these, factor the numerator and denominator individually and then combine them. Factor the numerator, but don't forget to combine them. Uh, factor the numerator and denominator individually, then combine them. So if I have something like x squared minus x minus 2, well, that looks like a is 1, b is negative 1, oops, and c is negative 2. The quadratic formula says that a solution here would be x is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So then I have negative negative 1 plus minus negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 over 2 times 1. Putting me at 1 plus minus negative 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times negative 2 is plus 8. So 1 plus 8 is the square root of 9. Skipping ahead a little bit, right? But hopefully um, that's okay. Square root of nine is three, so I get one plus minus three over two. So x equals one plus three over two, and x equals one minus three over two are both solutions. So x equals four divided by two is two, and x equals 1 minus 3 is negative 2 divided by 2, negative 1. These are solutions to uh, this whole thing, x squared minus x. Notice that I didn't have an equal 0 here. I'm, I'm imagining an equal 0. Um, to find the solutions and then I'm, I'm able to extract the factors. Right, that's okay. Uh, solutions to x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, we can write x squared minus x minus 2 equals x plus, oh, sorry, not plus, minus 2. Because if x equals 2, this has to be 0 times x plus 1, right? If x is negative 1, this also has to equal 0. <laughs> Check by expanding x minus 2 times x plus 1 is x squared plus x minus 2x minus 2, which is x squared minus, so x minus 2x is negative x, and then minus 2. Phew. Okay. So now I'm able to expand, or uh, sorry, factor x squared minus x uh, minus 2, and then into x minus 2 times x plus 1. That's for the numerator, right? That's for this guy here. Now I want to see if I can factor this into something that will, um, that will cancel with at least one of these terms. All right, so now we're going to deal with x squared minus 1. Now factor x squared minus 1. So here I've got a is 1, oops, b, let me write this, a is 1, b is 0, and c is negative 1. 
find the solutions, use those solutions to make our factors. So now I've got uh, x is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which is going to be 0 plus minus 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1. Phew, right? Otherwise, I'd be taking the square root of a negative, which I can't do, over 2 times 1. So I have 0 plus minus 0 squared minus 4 times negative 1 is just plus 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to skip right to it. Divide by 2. So now I have plus minus. So therefore, x equals 0 plus 2 over 2 and x equals 0 minus 2 over 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. And same deal here, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, divided by 2, negative 1. So these are the solutions. solutions to x squared minus 1 equals 0, right? So we can write x squared minus 1 is x and then x. Um, so we have plus 1 here. So if x is 1, uh, then in order to make that 0, I would get put negative 1 here. And then same idea. If x is negative 1, then I need this to be 0. So then I get x plus 1. You would have arrived at this if you use those special factoring formulas as well. Right? just treating the x squared minus 1 as if it were x squared minus 1 squared, which it is, right? And so now we can check this. Check, so x minus 1 times x plus 1 is x squared plus x minus x minus 1 which is x squared minus 1. So it worked out. So x squared minus 1 factored is x minus 1 times x plus 1. Yeah. So now we've factored both the numerator and the denominator individually. So now, Combine the factored numerator and denominator. Factored numerator and denominator. All right, uh, maybe I'll just pull it from here. I had x squared minus x minus 2 over x squared minus 1. Well, that's going to be the same thing as now I can't remember what the factors were here. Um, x minus 2 times x plus 1. x minus 2 times x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 times x plus 1. Hey, looks good. Because I'm multiplying across here, I'm allowed to cancel this x plus 1 with this x plus 1. Which is just x minus 2 over x minus 1. And that's simplified. This is 
the simplified rational expression. Right? So you're going to use factoring to be able to rewrite something like this and hopefully write the hope with factoring is always that you want to be able to cancel something, right? You see the same term um, in both the numerator and the denominator and you want to cancel them out. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see where I want to... Oh, shoot. Uh -huh. So I'm going to leave those, the rest of those, and I'll post the solutions to those. Uh, but let's talk about multiplying or dividing rational expressions. So let's go back here. Right. The only one uh, you don't have to do is 24. Looking at 23, right, there is an x to the 3, but if you have a closer look at it, you, you're still able to do it. Um, you'll see when you get there. Right. Got an x in each of these. Give it away. Um, okay. So multiplying rational expressions is really just multiplying fractions, right? So a fraction times a fraction, you can just smush the, the numerator and the denominator. And so that's not bad. We just have these uh, algebraic expressions instead of just numbers now. That's the only thing that's changed. Same thing with dividing rational expressions. We've got A over B divided by C over D. You have to have, so imagine A over B over C over D, you have to flip the denominator and multiply, right? So let's do a couple of these for practice. Uh, I'm only gonna bring in, well, maybe I should bring in all of them. So we want to be careful, right? Let's start uh, looking at some of these, right? So I'm multiplying, 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 all the way until here in 33, I'm dividing. So let's do one where we're multiplying and one where we're dividing. And just to kind of see um, what it's going to look like when we multiply and simplify. Let's do... Uh, hmm, which one? I'm trying to think which one I want to make you guys do on your own. Let's do twenty-eight. Okay. I'm gonna write it out, and then I'm gonna scoot it down below twenty-eight x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 times 3 minus x over 3 plus x. So hopefully, when I look at this, I'm thinking, hopefully, I'm able to pull out a 3 plus x from up here and a 3 minus x from down in the denominator. Right? Otherwise, these guys won't necessarily cancel and, um, and we might be left with a big mess. You could do something like you could expand this out here, um, but that gives you an x to the 3 term, which, um, which is not something that we're uh, easily able to deal with, at least not yet. So. Um, and we probably won't, we'll stick to quadratics. So here, my kind of plan of attack 
is that hopefully I can factor um, the top and bottom. I want to write out numerator and denominator. So the top and the bottom um, to be able to cancel. three minus x and three plus x respectively. Not respectively from the top and the bottom here. To make that make sense, I'm gonna write the bottom and top. Then it's respectively. Right, I want to be able to cancel a 3 minus x from the bottom and a 3 plus x from the top. There. Problem solved. Okay, so we want to factor x squared plus 2x minus 3. It means I have to find the solutions, right? I, this looks like a quadratic equation to me, so let's use the quadratic formula, find the solutions, create our factors. So x is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x is, and notice I haven't written them out, I can kind of pull my abcs from this formula without writing them out, although um, it might be a good reminder to just write them out. Uh, so a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 3 in this case. So we've got negative 2 plus minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. All divided by 2 times 1. x is going to be negative 2 plus minus and then 4 minus 4 times negative 3 puts me at uh, 4 plus 12 and maybe I'll just rewrite that as the square root of 16 divided by 2. Square root of 16 is 4, right? And so we have x is negative 2 plus minus 4 divided by 2. <clears throat> I, could, I could... Oh, what's going on over there? Um, I could cancel two from each of these, but just remember you have to cancel from this negative two as well as the four. Uh, just to kind of keep things safe, I'm not going to cancel a two until the very end. So here I get x is negative two plus four over two and x equals negative two minus four over two. <clears throat> Negative two plus four is two, divided by two is one. And so another solution is that x is negative two minus four, which is negative six divided by two. Negative six divided by two is negative three. So we can write, or we can factor, right, and say x squared plus two x minus three, oops, x squared plus 2x minus 3 can be rewritten as x minus 1 times x plus 3. Notice how I, I really kind of am picking up the pace, right? x equals 1 makes 0 if I have x minus 1, and x equals negative 3 makes 0 if I have um, x plus 3. So here, I've factored it. And you can go ahead and check it. I'm going to leave it because uh, it looks pretty good to me. You can kind of do it in your head if you want. So now, now we can factor the denominator x squared minus 2x minus 3. So if I have uh, 
this is a quadratic equation again, right? So I, I'm able to factor that by using the quadratic formula to find the solutions. So I have a is one, B is negative two, and C is negative three. So I have X is negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus four AC divided by two A. X is negative negative two plus minus the square root of negative two squared minus four times uh, one times negative three all over two times one. X is two plus minus, negative two squared is four, minus four times negative three, so plus uh, 12. Four plus 12 puts me at 16 again. So the square root of 16 really kind of jumping ahead here, it puts me at four divided by two so then x equals 2 plus 4 divided by 2. I'm resisting the temptation to cancel that 2 right away. Um, you can do it, but I'm going to leave it. And x equals, oops, no, I wrote two x's. And x equals 2 minus 4 over 2. So x equals 2 plus 4, which is 6 divided by 2 is 3 and x equals 2 minus 4 is negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. Therefore, we can rewrite this as a factored uh, equation uh, or expression, x squared minus 2x minus 3. x squared minus 2x minus 3 is the same as x minus 3 times x plus 1. And again, you can check it. Um, let me make sure that it works. Okay, so now I can go back to the original thing that I was supposed to simplify, multiply and simplify. Uh, it looks like I'm in luck, right? I, it looks like I'm able to cancel the 3 minus x and as well as the 3 plus x. So let's see here. I'm going to rewrite it. So we have x squared plus 2x minus 3 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 3 times, oops, 3 minus x uh, over 3 plus x. Hmm. Not quite, huh? <clears throat> okay. Why am I saying not quite? Rewrite as factors. Right? So this becomes the numerator x squared plus 2x minus 3. Let's see here, x squared plus 2x minus 3. I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to remember it. There. And then same thing, x squared minus 2x minus 3, I can rewrite as a factor. Copy. times 3 minus x over 3 plus x. Okay, 3 minus x is not the same as x minus 3, right? So you want to keep track of that. Uh, however, 3 plus x is the same as x plus 3, right? So it's not until we have um, subtraction that we run into trouble. So this is the same as x plus 3, which we can cancel with this x plus 3, right? So what I have is I have x minus 1 over x minus 3 times x plus 1 times 3 minus x. 
after I've canceled these. One thing. Note that x minus 3 is not equal to 3 minus x. So we can't cancel those. Yeah. So I guess that's simplified, I think. Pretty sure. That feels like plenty for today. Um, but definitely, definitely work through the, the problems that are in the notes, right? And just kind of make sure um, that you get comfortable factoring using the quadratic formula because it's going to be really useful. Um, any questions? Oh. Cool. Then I'll stop the recording. And I'll see you guys uh, on Thursday.